Hello there, everybody. Welcome back to another board game hour on a happy, happy Friday. Today we are featuring yet another Sunrise Tornado game. It has been a while since we've done Cat Sudoku Pier 1. Uh, Cat Sudoku is already an existing series. However, the next series, the next game in its series is called Pier 1, which is nothing like the other uh, Cat Sudoku games. Uh, originally, Cat Sudoku is a roll and write game. Um, this one kind of combines the mechanics of Cat Rescue along with um, like the mechanics of Cat Sudoku in that you can't have repeating numbers at the end or um, yeah, you just can't have repeating numbers, but you do shuffle things around. Uh, by the way, if you don't know me, I'm Angie from Shenanigans. I'm a streamer here on Facebook Gaming. If you are watching on Sunrise Tornado or on the Cat Sudoku page, I can't read your comments. So if you could please to um, check out my page link in the description down below. All you have to do is boop it if you're on mobile to pull down the very large descriptions, which has a lot of the links to all the people that um, helped make uh, Cat Sudoku Pier 1 a thing. Um, it will be on Kickstarter on August 23rd, so it is not officially like on the shelves yet, but hopefully with uh, help of viewers like you, uh, we can make it a reality. So first of all, let's go ahead and turn on the knock spot so we can get the collab links going in my chat, just in case. Hi Olga! Hi Michelle! Alright, so let's do exclamation collab. This one is quite large and I actually can't wait to uh, talk about a few of the things. We have a little bit of like real cat photos in between the games. So stick around and see uh, one of the cats that um, one of the kitties in Pier 1 is based off of. I'll show some of the real assets of the um, review copy in a moment before we switch scenes. Let me just uh, grab some shares and whatnot. So let's see. Here we are. Let's grab the share link here and put this on Twitter. If you're not following me on Twitter, I have been posting there more, um, more so. Michelle, if you could do exclamation socials, uh, that would help out because it has my uh, Twitter link and all that stuff. Michael, hello, thank you for liking the stream. I'm putting up a tweet on my Twitter, um, tagging Kayami, who is the actual artist of the game. Uh, a lot of people have been confusing me as the artist for uh, Cat Sudoku and Cat Rescue. I am not the artist for that. I am the artist for 123 Cheese. Um, I do stream a lot of content for Sunrise Tornado, so I understand the mistake there, but I do not want to claim Kayami's artwork as my own. If you do see in the um, in the comments where the collab bot is, Kayami's shop, as well as her Twitter, is um, listed. Please, please stop by and support my fellow artists. That is something I would never want to do as an artist myself. Um, all of the cats in the Cat Sudoku um, series are based off of real cats of people in the board game industry. Um, this one's name is Yorian. Olga, thank you for sharing the stream. Uh, socials with an S, Michelle, Michelle, thank you. This one is the artwork by Kayami um, themselves. This is very cute. This is actually Yorian from the poker set that would be part of the project as well. So these are like little poker cards, you know, your your Jack, Queen, King, Joker, one through 10. And they're from all of the cats from the Cat Sudoku series. This is the box for Pier 1. This is the review copy. The actual copies of the game will be much bigger, much bigger. But this is what the box will look like in its little mini version. See how it says review copy down below. Very, very cute. And the cards will be more like tiles like this, so that they'll be easy to put down on the on the tiles. Hi, at the laundromat today, tutoring when I get home, so just listening for now. Sounds good, Michael. Thank you for popping in and using me as a little bit of a podcast. 
Um, this is a bigger version of the artwork so you can all see it. And on the flip side is the scorecard. You'll be using uh, this one for your scoring today. And we've learned that there are there is a story or theme connected with Pier 1, which I think is super cute and I can't wait to show you. Um, Yorian in the game looks like this for Pier 1. So there are red cards and blue cards and Yorian represents the number 2 in Pier 1, but also is the Joker in the, uh, in the poker set. Okay. Woohoo! Thank you! So if you're in the chat, you can see my Twitter, uh, twitter.com slash shenanigans. Uh, my Steam friend code, my Kofi. Um, you're here on Facebook. Uh, my Discord and my TikTok and my YouTube is coming soon for uh, how to play tutorials just like the one I'm doing today. This is more of a live stream one, so I'll be re um, refilming just the literally how to with the rules uh, later this weekend, hopefully. All right, without further ado, let's get a little peek at what's going on. So if you didn't know, Sunrise Tornado is doing a Kickstarter on August 23rd. It's launching then, but it's not just one game, it's three games. Hi, Ariane, how are you doing? Um, the, they're all foodie themed, so if you like food and you like family games, you're going to love this Kickstarter coming out next month on the 23rd. I will be playing Cat Sudoku Pier 1 um, today to show you. Cat Sudoku Pier 1 is actually a solo game, which is really interesting. And then we have 1-2-3 Cheese which is more of a, you know, two to five player game for multiple people. And Boba Mahjong is an exclusive two player only game based off of Boba and set collection. So all fun stuff. I'm glad that you're doing okay, Ariane. I'm doing fantastic. So this is the website. So if you do, I'll do collab one more time. This is one of the first ones. This is the website for Sunrise Tornado. The um, Facebook page is also linked there, so please give it a follow. Um, just to show you all, um, we have Kayami. This is Kayami Shop. I don't believe Kayami is selling plants, but um, is doing some really cute stuff here. Um, this is like a photo reel of their store. They do stickers, as you can tell, this is the actual artist of uh, Cat Sudoku and Cat Rescue. I am not the artist. I'm not trying to claim to be the artist for these. But look, they have cute little stickers. They like sparkle. They have bread on them and stuff. Super cute. They've got little masks, if you're still using that. And look at this cute little milky trio. They're cat. Cat Sunday stuff, so please go and also support Kayami, the actual artist, for this uh, for this game. Super cute. Yurian, who is the cat that is uh, this is face off. The owner is also uh, I know so cute, right? We got washi tape as well. I'm actually um, tempted to get this for my art streams for the for the sides. Washi tape's really really great at doing stuff like that. Um, but also, um, Cassie, also known as, um, what is this, Katzen Spiel Solutions, um, has helped out with the Cat Sudoku series before. Uh, Cassie was the one who made the tabletop simulator version of Cat Sudoku Roll for Clouds, uh, as well as the digital version on tabletop simulator for that. Um, Yurian is Cassie's cat. So definitely support Cassie and um, Cats and Spiel Solutions. If you need help with digitizing some of your games and stuff like that, definitely reach out to uh, Cats and Spiel Games. And if you see right here, they funded for a game. So you still have time to get in on their own board game, which is Klepto Kittens, which is basically a game about um, cats stealing cute things 
And as you can tell, it's the same style. So Kayami also did help um, with the artwork for Klepto Kittens, which is Cassie's game from Cats and Spiel Solutions. Oh my gosh, Raiders, happy Axolotl Raid. Hello, Raiders, hello, Philip. Thank you so much for the double like and the raid. That is so super sweet of you. We're doing one of the other games from the three in one Kickstarter coming out next month on August 23rd. Hi, hi, hello, hello. Hello, Raiders, how are ya? I will... <laughs> Mel, thank you for liking the stream. Yeah, so as you can see, the, the artwork right over here, Yodian, is from here. It's all, we're all helping each other. This is the Kickstarter right now. It has funded, so it will, um, it has 144 backers so far. Mel, thank you so much for following and being a new friend. Super appreciate it. Welcome to the Shenanja Gang. How's it going, friend? It's going great. Happy. Um, I'm just about to show one of the other games uh, from Sunrise Market if you'd all like to come and see. This one is not, so there is a whole lot of stuff going on if we're gonna do exclamation collab one more time to show all of the links. This one is actually a Kickstarter game by the person who is the owner of the cat that I am featuring from our game. It's really complicated, it's complicated. But to start, rewind, let's start from the very beginning. Hello, Sheen! A happy raid, hello raiders, hello. We're gonna rewind. For the people who just came into the um to the live stream today we have a kickstarter for sunrise tornado coming out on august 23rd david thank you for liking this stream hello hello um i am one of the artists i illustrated one two three cheese which happy has actually played with me before you might remember when we did that collab way back when um but this kickstarter also includes two other games which is Cat Sudoku Pier 1, which is what I'll be playing today, as well as Boba Mahjong. Uh, Cat Sudoku Pier 1 is a one player, it's a solo game. Um, borrows a lot of mechanics from Sudoku, as well as their other game, Cat Rescue, and kind of meshes it into one. Boba Mahjong is a two player game, two player exclusive game, and 1 2 3 Cheese is two to five players. Uh, the artist for Pier 1, or Katsudoku right over here, oh look, you can actually see my mouse, is not me. The artist for that is Kayami. You can see Kayami's washi tape and other... Washi tape! <laughs> that is Marcus. Um, and other cute stuff. Kayami is also a fellow plant lover, which is great. Marcus, have you seen this? No. Would you like to see this? Okay, in the meantime, I'm gonna move on. They got stickers, look. They've been posting like about their plants on their Twitter and stuff, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're also a fellow plant lover. So cute. But yeah, so they're, they're the person that draws the really cute cats that you've been seeing on my uh, streams. I don't wanna claim uh, art for that. Um, the cat that we're featuring today is Yorian. So this is from the poker set. Yurian is the Joker. But in Pier 1 is the number 2. As you can see there. And you can tell the style is literally the same. Cassie from um, Cats and Skill Solutions is the owner. is a lovely mom of uh, Yurian. And they also do tabletop simulator things if you need help to digitize your board games or stuff like that, or do uh, anything regarding that, um, definitely reach out to Cassie from Cats and Spiel Games. And they're the ones who also put out their own board game that has funded. That also happens to use artwork from Kayami. Does it all make sense now? It's, it's a lot of like overlap here. But today, we're going to talk about Cat Sudoku Pier 1, which is right over here. Okie dokie, Smokies, thumbs up in chat if you have not been lost yet. It was a lot. I know it's a lot. Capiche, capache. 
So the lore of this one is really fascinating. So I had no idea that this was the lore. Well, I had a little bit of an idea, but like uh, with the rules being updated and stuff like that, um, I can kind of see what's going on. So if you look really carefully over here, Michelle, thanks for the thumbs up. We have the cat in the stall. So the cats in Cat Sudoku Pier 1 are the actual merchants. They are the ones selling the fish that they caught. The object of the game, well, the object of the game is to get the most points, which you will see here on the score tracker. There are different star ratings, right? So you want to get as close to 40 points as you can. But those stars are actually the rating of your peer. So you are the, um, the fisherman's wharf construction builder. You are these tiles that you're putting together. You're making the stalls. Yes. You're making the stalls on the pier for the cats to sit at. And you have to organize it in a way where you'll generate the most sales or they're just nice and organized uh, with their fishes. Okay. Sounds good so far. Super duper cute. So how you're actually going to start this game is that if you go on Tabletopia, there are four different types of decks. Now, if you're going to be backing this Kickstarter, you'll be sent all of the cards, okay? You'll be sent all the cards if you back with the appropriate uh, pledge. But you can um, kind of increase the difficulty or make it easier on you uh, to understand when you're first getting used to the game. So level zero is the best way to learn, but is one of the hardest to score, okay? There's less to manipulate, there's less to learn about, but um, it is harder to get to that like four or five star rating that you're trying to do. Um, number one has more um, has more numbers. So if you kind of get the, the mechanics of the zero, then you can level up and go to level one and have more numbers involved. It is easier to score in one, in my opinion because you lose points for repeating numbers in rows and columns, just like in Sudoku. But there is more to handle and to deal with. Level two is where you handle with the Momos. If we zoom in really quick, Momo is the mouse and you also have blank cards. We do not exterminate the Momos. It's actually written in the rules that Momo is too cute and it is unlawful to hurt the Momos. So we have to safely catch and release it back. The Momos are lost on the pier. If you find a Momo in your, in your fish shop, the investigators uh, come and you don't get any points for that column or row. You don't pass the inspection. These meeples are the inspectors. They'll come and check the rows and columns as, uh, as you're building it to see how you do. If you take a look at the score track, this sounds all like really convoluted, but I promise you when we start playing, it'll make sense. There's these fishes down here. Okay. There's these fishes down here. These indicate how many cards are in your row or column when you bring an investigator over to score. I'm just gonna flip this really quick. We're using zero. Chucky, hey, thanks for, sh uh, for sharing the stream. So when you want to score, it is up to you to bring the um, health inspectors over and you decide where you're going to place it. You can only score on a row or column, let's put this here, this is a really good example, where a majority or all of your row and column is one, all different numbers, and is a majority red. We like red in this game, you want it mostly to be red, okay? 
So here on this one, we have five, four, and six. So this row passes the inspection and it is a majority red. There is Mr. President from Geeky Tees here. He's blue, kind of got in the way, but most of this row is red. So you're able to score here on the bottom where it says red, red, blue. Okay, so what does that mean? So if we go here, you have this little token. You're going to move it one stripe for that. And it says right here, plus one immediately. So you're gonna move it there. Now you're also going to check your up and down, your vertical columns. Five, three, and four are all different numbers. And it's a majority red. In fact, they're all red. So you're gonna get a little bonus for that too. Just wait and see, okay? So same thing. It is a majority red, so you're going to move one more stripe, get another reward for that stripe. But because we had it all red, you get that extra little bonus and you get to score again. And then here, the reward for that is plus one. If you notice on the score track, there are only plus ones on this bottom fish. The ones in this teal, um, in the teal box are end game bonus. So if you have say a row or column of five cards, you'd move this one, but you do not score the two immediately. Psh, psh. No, that's a no, no. We're not gonna do that, okay? You will, when you run out of deck, when you run, see I only have seven cards left. This is gonna be really, really fast. But when you run out of cards, that's when you're going to see what number these land on, and then you will score those. So this would be 15 points for five, eight, two, at the end of the game. If you notice these arrows, if I were to move up here, for example, all that arrow means is move the fish above it one stripe makes sense so far. I think that's the trickiest thing to remember. I'll be, oop, here, let's put this here. I'll be moving this back over to zero and we'll set these off to the side next to the fishies. Basic setup is that you had the, um, here, let me show you again. You'll draw the top eight cards of whichever deck you pick up. Obviously, the higher the, the level, the more cards you will have. Zero only has 15 cards, so it's a very fast game. Basically there as a learning, um, as a learning component more than anything. So when you set down your eight cards with the empty one in the middle, you're going to take it and you're going to flip. The next thing you're going to do from there is you're going to draw the top card and reveal it. It is a one. Hmm. You're going to choose where to place it. You cannot place it on diagonals. It's basically D-pad, right? Up, down, left, and right. Whatever cat you place it next to, you're gonna push. So I kind of want to align all of these blues. However, I don't want to push this down because I don't want the repeat of that one and one. Repeating numbers are bad, and at the end of the game, you will flip them over and you won't score as much. So you wanna to try to avoid that as much as possible. As much as possible. So I will actually place this in the middle and I will push up. So once you place a cat, you have to choose what direction you're going to push it. I will choose to scooch these cats up one. So now we have five, one, six, five, three, four, 
461. In terms of rows and columns, spaces create a new column. So here we have one column, and here on this second portion here, we have one column here with the four and the one, and one column here with six, a row of six. You need at least three or more cards in order to score with your health inspector. And then we have this one over here. On the horizontals, we have one row of four, one row of five, one six, two rows here, one of three and one of two because of this space, and we have four, six, one. Sounds pretty complicated, but I promise it's not. You basically continue this until, well, hold on. I'm hovering over to see I only have five cards left here, so I think I will actually score on this five. So this is five, one, six. I can score one. That's one point. And we have five, three, four. That's another one, and I'm going to score another point. This little icon here means refresh. So if I were to go all the way back here, I would go to the front and collect that one again. But for now, I'm only here. You cannot place an inspector in the same row or column of another inspector. These sit on the cards as they're pushed around. You can push it so say if I had this one here for whatever reason, and I pushed it here, and these aligned, that is okay. You just cannot place it in line of sight of another inspector. It's like they've already got that, you know, part of the pier, and they don't need you to, like, help out. You gotta go and check out the rest of the pier that's being built by you and make sure it's up to code and up to health standards. <laughs> All right, let's see what this next card is. This is a three. I don't really want to put the three in the middle because it'll overlap with these three. I could put a three here and I could scooch it up. And you know what, I think, I think I will. Aha. You only have five inspectors. I have five cards left, so I am going to aggressively um, score again. I will place it here on top of Layla. So we have one, two... Oh shoot, this was all three, so I needed to do it one more time. So here for this one, we have six, two, one, three. That is all majority red. So if we go over here, this row or this fish says four. One, two, three, four cards. So I'm gonna go here. This one tells me to move the upper fishy. It is also all red, so I get to do it again. So I'm going to refresh, get one more point. There is also this row of three, four, six, and three, majority red, all different numbers, so we can score for this too, or as well. That is a row of three, so I'm gonna move this fish one more. It is not all red, so I don't get to move it one more time. Okay, let's take a look at the next card. A uh, blue five, of course. Mm, I'm going to put it under and push up. I don't think we're in any trouble yet. I will score. Oh, I cannot. See, I wanted to put this here, but I couldn't because this inspector is blocking it. And I wanted to put it here, but I couldn't because this inspector is blocking it. 
Your inspectors are going to be one of the hardest things. So now I have to use one of the cards to push one of them out of the way so that I can introduce more of my inspectors or my meeples, if you will. Um, hmm. That's no good. See, I want to put this here, but I'm a little f afraid that these fives are going to bunk together. But we're going to do it anyway, because I want to push the inspector out of the way. It's going to be a two-step process. So I'm pushing it to the left now. Ooh, there's this five and five at the end. This is bad news bears. I don't know. Okay. Um... I will try and score though over here. In this case, there might be the case where there's repeating numbers, but you're still trying to score. Your whole, your board as a whole does not need to um, fit the constraints of no repeating numbers 100% of the time. That's something you're going to flip at the end of your game and your game ends when you run out of cards. So for this one, 6215, this checks out. It's a row of four. I'm going to move one more. It's all red. I'm going to move another one. This moves this top fish. If you need me to go through that again slowly, I will. So I was here. I moved one for the row of four. I moved this one up from five to six. It was all red, so I move it again to the next stripe. This arrow tells me to move the fish above. So this moved from two to four. And going back, we're going to check only the where the intersecting lines are. So this one is three, six, and one. All different numbers, majority red, we're good to go. So this is a three card row. So you would move this one down again. This means refresh. You bring it to the front. You immediately get that plus one. Okay. Tricky, tricky. I've got to fix this. There's a repeating five, repeating five, and a repeating five, and a repeating five. I don't like that at all. So we have a blue two. There's also a two in here. I'm going to put the two down here and hope for the best. Hey, Gary, thanks for liking the stream. Because if I move this up, I think this will bunk this out. Siri, I'm not talking to you. Good golly, my gracious. Anyways, <laughs> let's see. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna move it up because I don't like, I don't wanna move it down because then the threes will be an issue. Now the only repeating numbers we have are these two, five and five, which is kind of problematic. I only have two cards left. Uh, and again, the meeples have blocked me because I can't put it here, 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 or here. And I can only place on top of a red card, and these two are not red. Great. <laughs> Alright, let's see the next card. It's a one. Why'd you have to go and be a one? My gracious. Um... I need to scooch this out of the way. So we're gonna scooch this to the right. I think there are no more repeats. So just like in Sudoku, you don't want repeats, but you kind of, it's like a ticking time bomb. Like this one is my last card essentially, but I have two inspectors left to score points. I haven't even scored a single point, not a single star, not yet anyways. I'm only got seven points for this one. 
this zero card, there's not a lot of numbers. So I have to point out, like, don't feel bad if you're playing zero and you think you just suck at the game. The zero is hard to score because with less numbers means that you're going to have more repeats. Okay, so you're actually going to have an easier time playing with one. It's more numbers to manage, but you will score better, I think. Because the more numbers you have, the less repeats you're going to have. Oh, Gary, your sister is here with you. Hi, Gary, sis. Hello. Thanks for saying hi. So I, I think I'll just go through each one of these to show you the difference. And if you're interested in playing, do let me know. Um, I do have voice chat available. We also can do it through text chat because uh, I asked Tate to make the board with um, A through K and 1 through 11. So if you want to tell me place cat in E4, for example, and push right, you can do that as well. We're trying to be very accommodating. Alana. Oh yeah, you said that Alana is your half-sister came to visit you. Alana, hi. Nice to meet you. I'm Angie. I'm a live streamer here on Facebook Gaming and right now I'm talking about different types of uh, board games that you'll see on Kickstarter coming soon. Nice, nice. Um, I don't see any repeating numbers which could be super duper problematic. And um, after this game, I'm actually going to show the real cat that Yurian, the illustration, is based off of. <sighs> repeats are okay on diagonals. We're only looking at repeats in um, column and rows, just like in Sudoku. Nice to watch you, Gary tells me all about you. I am very into live streams. Really, Alana? That's awesome. Do you watch any on Facebook or do you usually watch on Twitch? Both are very good platforms uh, for very different reasons, but I'm pretty much here on Facebook exclusively. But I love, love, love listening about other people's content and uh, supporting the streaming community. Okay, I think we're in pretty good shape. I don't think I'm able to place another meeple, unfortunately. I would really like to. I don't think I can. Because I... Yeah, this is not majority. I guess I could put it here. And this would not score, but this would. Oh, you watch on Facebook? Who are your favorite Facebook content creators? I'd love to... I'd love to know. Yeah, I think I'm going to place it here because it would just be a waste of a meeple not to do that or a health inspector in this case. So, Marcus, the theme of um, Katsudoku Pier 1 is your tiles are you constructing the pier. You're building the pier with your tiles. Your merchants are the cats. So the cats are actual merchants at the stall selling the fish at that stall. Meeple, meeple. <laughs> My boyfriend has become a Pokemon, apparently. Meeple, meeple. Meeple, meeple. <laughs> Whatever. All right, so again, to score, you're looking at the amount of cards. So this one's three. They're all different numbers, and they're a majority red, which is good. So I'm going to move this one here. One stripe, and it moves this one up one. I cannot score for the column. Apolo apologies for the noise. Our boyfriend does not care about them streaming and makes all the noise, apparently. It's a thing. This is why the shenanigans theme is chaos, because it often is chaos here. Thanks for your content as always, friend. You're the best. Oh, happy. <gasps> happy. Thank you for the hundred stars, happy. That means so much to me. Thank you so much. Uh, on Shenanigans, we also do star punches for stars, but also we're doing a different um, star system, which is actually in the pinned comment down below. Yinji, happy! 
So obviously this one is more of a, it was described as the game for more Euro, Euro type gamers or people who really like a little bit of um, strategy, which I can definitely see. Happy Axolotl with the 100 stars. Thank you so much for supporting the content. Axolotl. Do you know Chim Kicks? They were talking about not, was it Chim Kicks last night? No, Panda. Do you know Panda, Pumpkin Panda Gaming? They were actually talking about, um, on their Minecraft server, they had an Axolotl farm. And then they said that they were going to name their axolotl Philip, and I was like, do they know each other? Because if not, that is such a funny clinky dink. That's such a funny clinky dink. So I have to know, do you know Pumpkin Panda? Because if not, they're gonna get an axolotl and they're gonna name it Philip. <laughs> Which I think is really hysterical if you don't know them. Thank you for the 100 stars. We are going to spin for one of the puppets. It guarantees a puppet. Here's your Kiwi star. Thank you so much. Those go on my fridge to remind me of the wonderful community that we built together. I don't, I need to know them. Yo, like legit though. Pumpkin, Panda, Panda Pumpkin, pa Pumpkin Panda Gaming. So funny, they were playing Minecraft. They were playing Minecraft and they had an Axolotl farm on their Minecraft. Uh, server and they were telling me about naming their axolotls Philip and I was just sitting there like there's no way they don't know each other do they know each other there's no way they have to know each other but you don't so that's so funny so funny <laughs> here let me drop the link for you Panda? Pumpkin Panda's Gaming. Here you go. I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing the link for you, Happy. Just for you. I'm replying to you personally. Here you go. Boop. I booped it. We're gonna go to the wheel spinner scene really quick, okay? Our new and improved wheel spinner with only puppets all the time. Of course it's Mr. Fox, of course. So how this works is we're going to get Mr. Fox for five minutes, but if someone someone or as a whole stream collective sends a hundred more stars before uh, the timer I don't have a timer on this one but our timer hits um, five minutes I'll extend mr. Fox's time by another five minutes if the timer runs out the puppet goes away <laughs> the puppet goes away um, and then if someone sends another hundred we spin again for a different puppet let me grab a spinner really quick this is like hugely a faux pas but apologies I'm just gonna grab something from this scene because I totally forgot to grab it and put it in the other one. Okay, so we're just going to, I don't know, where can we put it? What's a good place? Yeah, let's put it like down here. That works for this setup. There we go. We're not going to start the timer yet because Mr. Fox isn't out yet. Oh, whoa. Uh, what a great nap roll. Why, hello there, everybody. I'm Mr. Fox. I'm one of Angie's puppets, if you didn't know. Happy over here saying, the OG legend. It's so good to see you. Hee hee hee. All right, Angie, what's happening here? I am in a little bit of a pickle, Mr. Fox. Well, why, when aren't you in a pickle? Hi, Michelle, how are ya? All right, let's see. Oh, oh, yes, is this uh, Cat Sudoku Pier one? Yep, 
It's been a while since you played this one, hasn't it? It certainly has, Mr. Fox. Well, let's see your rows so far. Let's start from the bottom and go to the top. Four, two, three, five. Okay, that looks good. Five, six, one. That looks good. Three, one, two. Mm-hmm. One, five, four, six. Hey, you're doing pretty okay with the repeats. It's so unlike you. Wow, thanks for the shade, Mr. Fox. I think you're really smart and intelligent, too. Well, I made... <laughs> ah, you made me. You made me have the sassafras personality. I, I certainly did. Me and Mr. Turtle. Are you some kind of masochist or something? Oh my goodness. Uh, anyway, check my uh, <laughs> check my columns, Mr. Fox. Okay, so here we have the column of just a single four, and then we have one, three, five, two, mm -hmm. then five, one, six, three, four, two, one, five, and six. There's no repeat so far, but there is one more card. Can you do it? Can you put it and still have no repeats? Uh, I don't know. Press that F. F is for flip. But BT dubs on Tabletopia. Ooh, a blue three. Oh. Angie, I think you're gonna get wrecked. Oh my god, Mr. Fox, you're so mean sometimes, I swear. Yeah, and where exactly are you gonna put that last meeple for scoring? Look at all these health inspectors. This pier is like rampant with health inspectors. What did you do? Are the fish not up to code? You gonna get people sick? No, I'm not trying to. God, don't be mean. <laughs> you know me, you know me. Who's in chat, by the way? Happy, thank you so much for the 100 stars. Says, thanks for your content. As always, friends, you're the best. No, you the best. And Michelle saying, hello. Gary says, hi, Mr. Fox, it's Gary. Uh, it's Gary's sister, Alana. Hi, Alana, how are you? I hope you like puppets. Puppets happen a lot here on Shenanigans. <sighs> look, 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 look. You can put a three at the top and then scooch it over one, right? Yeah. But that wouldn't really help you. If you put it on the second, that'll be a repeat on three. If you put it here on the third row, that could work. But when you push it, you'll have a repeat of three right here. And on the bottom is no go because there's already a three here. So what are you going to do? How are you going to puzzle this together? I want to see. I can't... Okay, so if we're going to do um, verticals, I also can't put it here to push up because of this three. I can't put it here because of this three. Oh my gosh. I can't put it right next to three. That's blasphemous. You could put it here, but more so at the top. Like here. Yeah, and then when you push down... Oh, but wait, will it bunk up the rest of your numbers? So this will be a 4, and then this will be a 2, and this will be a 1. No, you should do that. I think I will. Alright, alright. So we're gonna move this entire row down. Oh, whoa. Alright, yes, good. So it looks like we're okay. But where are you going to put your your meeple? That's a really good question. You can't put it there because this one's blocking it. You can't put it here because you've got two inspectors already. You have to place on a red card. There's not enough on this one. Gary says, I love puppets. Gary has a big surprise happening this week. A big surprise? That sounds like a lot of fun. You are not able to pl to place your last health inspector. So your health inspector is going to take the day off. Womp womp. You have no more cards. So now what we're going to do is you're going to take off the rest of the inspectors. They all oop, they all go home. And we're going to go into the final scoring, which is basically where you flip any repeats. So from the bottom, we've got five. Then we have one, two, three, four. And then we have two, five, six. One, three, four. All right, 
you pass the horizontal inspection. Oh my, the five minutes are already up, but I'm gonna help Angie score the final round, okay? And then I'll see you all later. And then we have four, one, three, oh, one, two, three, five, one, three, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so you get to score whatever is left. Great. So what that means is now I go each column, each row, and I score that as if I had a meeple on it. Uh, so four isn't gonna get you anything. We're gonna we're gonna do columns. This one is not majority. This one is not majority. This one is majority. So we've got a row of one, two, three, four, five. So if we look at the here, we're gonna find the one with five and scooch that one. There is no plus sign here, so it's not time to score yet. Uh, that is not enough to score. You need three cards or more. And now we're going to do the horizontals. This is a majority row of four. We're gonna move that. This is a plus one, so we're gonna move that immediately. Uh, that was this one, yes. This is not majority. This is not majority. This is majority. So there is another row of four. So we're gonna scooch that here, which this means move the fish above it. And I believe that's it. Womp womp. All right. So keep in mind, this is not my final score. It's not nine because you have to add the points from the three fishes at the top. That's right. So there's none, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards or more, did not get any. Six cards or more, did not get any. But you got some for five points more. In fact, you got a whole 10. So 10 plus nine makes 19, and you shoot up all the way here. Your peer has been rated a one star peer. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> womp womp. Better luck next time, Angie. Thanks, Mr. Fox. But like I said again, if you're playing the zero level, uh, don't be too discouraged by any low scoring um, ones because it's very, very difficult to get anything past that level because of the cards available to you. These were the entire cards in the entirety of the deck. But if you were to play with more cards, you can make longer rows, longer columns, and all of that stuff. Uh, Gary asked, what is this game that you're playing? We are playing one of the three-in-one Kickstarter games uh, coming out next month called uh, Sunrise Market, which includes three games, all that have to do with food. The first one that we're playing is at the tippity top right over here called uh, Katsudoku Pier 1. And then this one right here, one, two, three cheese, which I actually illustrated, um, is about, you know, cheese samples and um, like, you're, you're basically a gang of mice where their cheese heists have gone wrong and you're trying to incriminate your, um, your gang and like go out scot-free and escape. And then Boba Mahjong is just a really cute boba set collection game that is meant for two players. Um, so I'm showcasing and previewing these games um, before you have a chance to back them on Kickstarter and help make it a reality. Um, let's see. I'm going to do exclamation collab in case anyone is still here that has not seen all of those links and we'll talk about them in a bit. And uh, once again, I'm able to play this game on my own, but if anyone is in chat and would like to try the game, um, I'd be happy to let you try to beat my score. So if anyone gets more than 19 points and tries it out, I will give you three badges on the Shadanjigan server. On my server for my stream, I do animal teams, and the team at the end of the month that has the most badges, um, I will 
do art for you and send you a photo of it at the end of the month. So here for the links, we have the Facebook page and the website for Sunrise Tornado. And then we have Kayami's store and um, the Twitter. Kayami is the artist of the game who drew all the really cute cats and the box art and the background and everything like that. Um, and then the Katsudoku Siri cats are based on real cats. So the one being featured right now is Yorian. This one, number two. If you'd like to know more about that uh, version of the board game industry with creating digital versions of board games like Tabletop Simulator or Tabletopia, definitely hit up Captain Spiel Solutions. And the About Me for their website and their own actual Kickstarter as well called Klepto Kittens, which is also illustrated by Kayami as well. All right, but I did promise cat photos. So let me see those cat emojis in the chat if you'd like to see the real Yorian. Because I would love to show you the actual cat. That's right over here. This this one right here, Yorian. Number two, this cutie patootie. Cats, 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 cats. Do you want to see the real photos of the cat? So I'd love to show it to you. These are what the card backs will look like of the actual card. It has Pier 1 written on it. And then the cats are all on the other side as well. I don't believe the board comes with the game. That's just there on Tabletopia to help you organize it. I believe it's just going to be the score tracker and the cards. And you would have to like place it out on the table. Um, unless um, Tate or Sunrise Tornado decides to um, make it a stretch goal or something to um, include the board. I don't think that'll be a thing because the board would be too large um, to include in the size of the box. But I did want to let you all know that. So let's take a look at Yorian. This is the cat. Look how cute. Definitely a gamer cat. Look at that wonderful setup. What game is it that they have set up, I wonder? Almost looks like Mice and Mystics, but not, because it's not mice, but it's like got that like tile exploration mechanic going on right there. Lots of painted figures. Very cute kitty cat. Look at that face, got the green eyes, the very uh, light tan with the stripes, very, very cute. Let me see what um, has been said about this cat. Let's see, Yurian is a male and he's five years old. A five-year-old kitty cat. Meow meow. So cute. Look at this handsome boy. Oh yeah, it's like green but has like the yellow on the outside. Very, very cute. Aww. This cat's gonna be famous. But that's pretty much how you play uh, the game in a nutshell. I think I will play level two just to illustrate what to do with the blank cards and with Momo. <laughs> this cat cracks me up, truly. I think of all of these photos, this one's my favorite because he just looks so confused. I believe they're um, set in Australia. So any Aussie friends in chat, if you'd like to support another um, Australian content creator, definitely check out Cat and Spiel. All right, well, let's check this out. We're going to combine. So if you are new to Tabletopia, and you're not sure how to get all of the cards together, I will show you this trick. 
So if you press and hold your shift key and you click and drag, anything in this box will be selected at the same time. Then when you click and drag it, don't let go until you need like an anchor card. See how I didn't um, select that one, Gohan? You're going to overlap it until you get that really bright, pretty orange and let go. All of your cards will be there now. If you want to move the entire deck, click once and then drag. And if you want to flip a card, you're going to press F while hovering over the deck. So let's see. We're going to take a look at these. These are the different types of decks you can make together. So I'm going to do the one through six, but also the Momos and the blank. Momo is just the name of this really cute mouse. We're not going to exterminate Momo. It is unlawful to hurt Momo in the Cat Sudoku series. Momo is just a really cute name. Um, but we can't have Momo out lost in the pier or the health inspectors are not going to like that. Mm -mm. So you gotta catch them and I'll show you how to catch them. It's actually a really good um, example here in the rules about Momo. So finding Nomo and it says due to Momo's extreme cuteness, it is unlawful to harm Momo in Katsudoku series games. Momo are lost in Pier 1. We need to find them and send them back home safely. So if the cards pushed include one vendor card. So remember that the cats are your merchants. They're the vendors. And a matching colored Momo next to each other, you found them. So here in this example, there's Momo and then there's a cat that matches the color right next to it. If those two cards are pushed, they, um, you will remove Momo and send Momo back home safely. The card used to push could be literally anything. It could be a blue cat, it could be another Momo, it could be a blank card. Um, the drawn card can be any card, including Momo or a blank. It has no effect on the action. You can only remove one Momo per turn. Okay, and when you remove it, it does not push the um the card you placed up against it it leaves a gap in the middle very important uh, because this game has a lot to do with the columns and rows all right so let's let's try it out let's try it out so again setup is the same you're just gonna go here and you're going to set the first four uh the first eight cards down but leaving a space in the middle. By the way, is there anybody who would be interested to try out any of the levels um, in chat? <laughs> um, what? Wow, it is very, very red here. And we start off with two Momos right off of the bat. Oh my god, I am shook it. Uh, okay, we're gonna have to deal with this. We gotta use our big brain plays now. I know, right, Michelle? Oh! By the way, I had- I was a complete dummy. If you are on my Discord, and if you're not on my Discord, please consider joining. Um, I do a lot of different variety games, and um, I've just- put out game roles. So if you do like board game content, consider getting the role for board games. That way I can specifically tag people who are interested in the content. That way it doesn't like bog up the server or like your own notifications. That way I don't have to tag literally everybody on the server for everything. I don't want to annoy people. I, that's not what it's about. But I was a complete dummy and forgot to put the board game reaction to the to the reaction bot. So if you're on the Discord, do check out rules. And if you are interested in this type of content, please tag uh, boop that um, the dice emote, and you'll get the role automatically. 
so far there's only like oh there's six there's six people who've done it so like michelle and nicole and all that stuff okay so there's no way for me to get rid of the momos right now because i have to um i have to have a red cat next to it uh some of the expansions or the extra pledges on kickstarter will include blue momos if we can hit that for a stretch goal but um as of right now the momos in the base game of cat sudoku are only red so keep that in mind i'm going to draw this one it is a red one i am super tempted to just slap that like right here i'm gonna slap it right there because i'm going to push this down uh we have 11 cards so i think we're in like a pretty good space if you're placing an inspector meeple here. I could score for this. This is three, six, five. Oh no, I can't. I lied. If this was a different number, you could score for this, but you cannot score for any uh, row or column that has a Momo. Health inspectors don't like rats or mice. Just, just saying. Um. In this case, the only place I could place it if I wanted to score would be here. The blanks are meant to kind of just extend your rows or columns for these um, colors. So they're to help out the majority, but they are not a number. They don't count for you or against you really, unless you're looking for the points for how long your long, how long, or tall your column or row is. I'm going to not place my inspector. I don't think my peer is ready yet. So I'm going to uh, just flip this one. Good gracious. <laughs> okay, this is a good example. So I'm going to place this one. Here, I'll move this. I'm going to place this one right over here and we're going to push it to the right. I have pushed a Momo that is next to a merchant cat. So this one, Layla finds Momo and goes, oh no Momo, go home, go home. The Momos you find are worth points at the end of the game. I don't know why I said it that weird. Momos at the end of the game are worth points. Okay, any Momos that have not been found and are still lost in the pier at the end of the game, so I have 10 cards left, count against you. So Momos, the final inspection. You get one victory point for one Momo. If you find two Momo, it's three victory points. If you find three Momo, that's six victory points. But for every Momo that's in the remainder of the pier, you take out two points at the end. Okie dokie, Smokies. All right, and it leaves that gap there. That is intentional. Um, now I really can't score, so I'm gonna move on. Yeah, Michelle, can you tag the board game role and see if anyone wants to play? Um, just say that I'm taking players for a game and I'm willing to teach them. It's about cats, cat merchants, and uh, do puzzles as well. Do puzzle and mystery. It's not really a mystery game, but it is definitely like a puzzle game. It has like spatial awareness and like number puzzle. And just be like, we're live if you would like to play. Angie's gonna open up the stream soon. Thank you. This game is super cute. So Tate's games are very cute, but they're very brain hurty. I think of all three of them, this one is the most difficult to, um, I can see why he said this one is mostly for the Euro gamers. Because they're the types that really like strategy and thinking ahead like three steps. This is kind of the cute card game equivalent of that so if you like really difficult games this one is for you and if you like cute things as well based off of actual cats like mr president is one of my favorite ones because i know this cat in real life 
Uh, my friend is a, you know, is as is the owner of a friendly local game store here, and um, she also has a cat rescue named Geek Kitties. Um, but you know, she sells board games, um, makes a safe space for people to come and play and rent board games. And Mr. President is one of the shop cats. Mr. President was named after Teddy Roosevelt and is a tuxedo cat. Very cute. Um, and you know, all of these cats have their own little stories, which is really great. And I try to share that during my streams, but um, there's only so many streams I can do and so many cats. Gohan has a koi fish. What is Gohan's story? Gohan is the Lynx Point Siamese or a Siamese tabby mix. Um, and is owned by Jacqueline Chow with Show Me How to Win. So Show Me How to Win, um, it's basically, a, it's another like how to play, like it's another content creator. Um, she just had an article put out for her recently actually so it's really nice to see like kind of everyone's cats together as one community just like how we support each other as content creators like the cats are coming together and creating their own little fish market community and it's really cute um i'm a big fan uh, so let's see. This three is kind of problematic. <laughs> that that was me stalling because I do not like this three whatsoever. I will... I will push again to the right to push Layla next to the other Momo. How many cards do I have left? I have nine. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Oh my god, I'm getting all the blue cards. This sucks. also a five so if I were to push this up I would not be able to rescue Momo for two reasons one is that this would be next to it and that doesn't work and two Momo would not be pushed um so I want Layla next to it, but I don't want to... This is problematic because I don't want the fives or this three repeating. That doesn't help solve the repeating number issue, if you know what I mean. Um, I could put it here. I'm going to put it on this side and push to the left. So again, shift click and drag selects everything you can now scooch that comfortably this momo goes away momo goes home go home momo uh so now these fives aren't conflicting but now there's a six and a six and a three and a three this is a mess this is a hot mess let me just tell you now because I had to uh, rescue those Momos right away. But I do have eight cards and five meeples, so I'm gonna have to like fix this really fast. Um, that's another blue card. What in the hey hey? What in the hey hey is happening? What is happening? Okay, so we're going to put this above and push this down. That way it makes this three not aligned. But now I have to push that six out of the way. There's seven cards left. I feel like I could do better with the meeples. I'm gonna place one. I'm gonna try to place one. I'm gonna put it on Mr. President. So that is one, two, yeah, one, four, five. They're all different and it's all red. So if we go here, Let's move these all back to where it was. So that's three cards, majority red. We move it to the first stripe. We're going to move it up one. It was all red, so we get rewarded for our great organizational skills. And we're going to move it one more stripe, move it to two. Okay, what else did we have? Uh, so that was this one. This is also majority, and there's no repeating numbers. We only have two, three, four, majority red. 
we get to move it one more time to another stripe with this fish because it's three cards and we get to move it up one because of the plus one. All right. Is anyone confused about anything so far? Please let me know if I'm going too fast. I realize that, um, you know, I get through these playthroughs really quickly because I've played these games so many times and I understand them. Um, I think that the more people see me play them, the more they'll kind of get it over time. But if there's something specifically, like, confusing you, like, if you don't know how do I choose which fish to move, let me know. Uh, to answer that question, in case you do have that question, it is determined by how many cards are in your column or row, and it will be shown at the top of your sharky fish. Eric, hi, thanks for liking the stream. So for instance, this consisted of three cards. So if you look here, this one says one, two, three cards or four cards. Okay. Nicole, thanks for liking the stream. Welcome, friends. Welcome. I rescued the Momos. Oh my gosh, Nicole is here. Nicole is the reason why the rules are written the way it was for Momo. So Mom, I, I just want to really show this to Nicole because I think she'd get a kick out of it. So originally Momo was to be exterminated and she literally wrote in like, I don't like that. <laughs> like we have to save the Momos. Momos, I know. And it literally says due to with double asterisks on either side, Due to Momo's extreme, we need to capitalize that M, but anyways. Due to Momo's extreme cuteness, it is unlawful to harm Momo in Cat Sudoku series games. Momo are lost in Pier 1. We need to find them and send them back home safely. Other, uh, So just to reiterate, because I know that last time we played this like months ago, there was confusion about how to handle Momo's. So, <laughs> protect the Momo. <laughs> so, to answer those questions, and I did confirm this with Tate before coming on today, the card you put down can be any card. So you can use a Momo to save a Momo. However, in order to save the Momo, you need to push the cat or the vendor that is attached to the momo or the mouse they both have to move at the same time um it doesn't matter what card makes them move but as long as you push them together and they move together then you remove or you save the momo and it leaves a blank space you see that uh, there might be, um, with the series coming out with the Kickstarter, there might be a stretch goal to introduce blue Momos, but as of right now, all Momos are red. So you'll need a red vendor cat next to this Momo here. What was I doing with my life? Oh yes, so that is complete. Honestly, I think the hardest thing about the game are these dumb meeples. So these meeples... If uh, Nicole and Eric are just joining, there is an actual story to this game. So I'm going to start from the very beginning. Um, this is Cat Sudoku Pier 1. Uh, Pier 1 is a game of building or creating your own fisherman's wharf. These cats are the vendors or the merchants for the specific fish that they have. This looks like a rainbow trout. So Layla is the merchant of <laughs> the rainbow trouts uh, same thing with mr president mr president from geeky tees it's the geeky tea shop cat mr president is the vendor of the red snappers so when you're placing the cards down envision that you're helping construct or build their fisherman's wharf and all these gamer kitties are coming together to build a beautiful uh, fish selling community <laughs> it's really cute and these meeples that come along come in to like grade your uh, wharf make sure it's all up to code they are the health inspectors 
these guys. They're coming in and they're like, Ah, uh, Mr. President Toffee and Gohan, you have a very organized uh, wharf here. I don't see any health code violations or anything like that. This looks good to go. And you get points based off of that throughout your game. Uh, same thing here, and it'll go... The health inspectors will go down the, the columns. Uh, go down the rows and up the columns, up and down the columns. But you don't want to put another health inspector in another health inspector's way when you're placing them. They don't like that very much. They don't really get along. <laughs> and just like in Sudoku, any um, repeats and stuff like that, they are removed at the end of the game. So in case you missed it, that's what this game is. I like kind of understood, but I like, I like all of the little um, elements coming together to really make it obvious. <laughs> I'm in trouble! Look at this six and this six. Don't give me a blue. Thank you. Gracious. Um... Mm -mm. No likey. Me no likey. Do not like. I'm going to push this six out of the way. I'm gonna push this right. Oh yeah, so if you'd like and if you have time, I'm keeping track of my scores. So for zero I got, for the zero deck I got 19. So if anyone wants to come in and try their hand at this and they beat my score, you'll get, uh, you'll get badges. You'll get badges for beating. So just like for Monopoly, you'll get three badges just for trying. And if you actually win, you'll get uh, five badges overall. Um, all right. I really feel like I'm not doing so hot right now and I need to score somehow. So I'm going to bring a health inspector over to check out Yordion, which is the cat that we're featuring today. Look at this cutie patootie. gonna check out Yordian's stall. So this is one, two, five, six. This column is all good to go. It's majority red. No momos, no rats. It is a column of four. So we're going to move this one. Right, so we're moving this one stripe because it says three or four cards. Uh, this arrow means to move the fish above it. Let's see what else we got here. And then we have this. Even though this is blank, it helps with having majority. So two, three, six, blank. This is also good to go. It is also four cards long. So we're gonna move this again. This is refresh. It goes all the way to the front and you score that plus one immediately. This game makes me really nervous for being so darn cute. Okay, we're gonna flip. There's a Momo! Momo! Alright, Momo, you're gonna. We're gonna move you next to a red cat. It would be absolutely silly of us not to put you next to a cat. I'm gonna put. Shoot. I'm gonna put you on here and push down. Yeah, that does not mess up the numbers. Five. Okay, how many do we have left? We have three health inspectors left. And five cards. I cannot put the health inspectors on any blues. They need to be on the red cards. I can't put it here, here, or here, honestly, because this Momo's in the way, so I can't place it. So we gotta fix that Momo situation, like, now. A one. I'm gonna put Gohan here and we're gonna push to the no oh my god so annoying no wait I can't do that 
Momo! Alright, you want it that way? You want it that way? We're gonna get it that way. Alright, we're gonna put- I'm gonna put Gohan under Gohan. Alright. Bear with me here. We're gonna push up. These are all okay. I'll just need to move this one out of the way. This Momo was moved with Layla. Layla is an expert Momo catcher, let me just say. We have found all of the Momos. All the Momos are back home safely. Um, but now I'm stuck with four cards and three health inspectors, and I really want those points. Still can't. I still can't, because this is blocked by this one. This has repeat. This is blocked by this one. This one's blocked by this one, so that's great. I've totally bunked myself in a corner. I'm not mad at all about this. <laughs> Alright, let's flip this one. There is a four. I'm gonna move this here and push left. I still can't place it. Oh my god. If Mr. President here was the red one, I could have done it. But I cannot. All right, well, let's hope for the best. Give me a red. Nice. No, not nice. There's a three here. I can't do that. I can shove this one out of the way, but no, then Mr. President would be Mr. President, Mr. President. And then if I put Layla here, there's Layla, Layla. Oh my god. I want to move the meeples out of the way. What if I put Layla down here? That's one, two, three, five, six. And scooches this up. Will that ruin anything? This will be six, four, one, three, one, four five six three okay i think this is the play we're gonna move all this entire row up one no wait yeah this sucks but i mean it's better uh i can place this somewhere i think i can so i'm gonna place it here on layla so this is majority one, three, four. So I move this, I score one. And then here, left to right, three, five, six. Majority red, I can do this. So that will be another one on the bottom fishy. Is move this one again. All right, let's see. Last two cards. A five. I think I have to put it under here. Because this will lengthen this for end game scoring. It will also shove the two out of the way. This will be two, two is here, six, four. Oh, the one and the one, that's super annoying. I think I can fix it at the end, hopefully, depending on what card I have. Wait, can I place a health inspector? Oh no, I can't. These health inspectors are so annoying! See, I can't, because this blocks this and this, and then I can't put it here because it's not a merchant cat. Actually? Is that a thing? It has to be on a red vendor, so not including the blanks. Okay, well, what what is this? Blue? Oh, it's a red blank! Okay. Okay. Well, there's a one and one here, which is no bueno. Not good. Now it's no good. 
So I kind of want to, because at least then I could score high at end here. Um, yeah, we're going to do it. I'm going to maintain, oop. I'm going to maintain that my stuff is not flipped over. Because I think that will... Oh, no! What if I put this here? Okay, that seems to work. I can't place one of my merchants, but I won't be flipping anything over, it seems. Okay, I'm going to stick with that. And now we're going to have the final inspection of flipping over cats. So no repeats. Again, if there is a space, this is counted separately from this. So three, two, six. That's good. Five is good. This is good. Good, good, good. One, two, three, five, six. One, two, four, five, six. One, three, four, and five. Okay, so this is good. We're gonna take off the health inspectors because that makes it confusing for me. You don't have to do that. And now you're going to score for every single row, every single column. So we're gonna do just pick one so i'm gonna do columns first this on the column is by itself it doesn't matter this is one two three four five cards so we're gonna go to this little stripey shark dude and move it one this one is also majority one two three four five same thing i'm gonna move that up there uh, this is also majority. Three, but it's also red, so we get to move it two stripes. So let's go back here. This one tells me to move the one above. Then I move it one more time for being all red. This one says plus one immediately. <laughs> uh, this one is not three or more, so it does not count. Now I have the rows, so this is three, five, one. That is three of all red. Oh yeah, this is gonna be really tasty. Look how nice and organized this whole section here is. One, three, five. So that is a row of three. I move it one, move this immediately. I move it again, because it's all red, plus one immediately. Um, let's see, this next one, same dealio. One, two, three cards, all red. So three cards, move one stripe. This moves one here. This tells me I still get 10 points, but then you move the fish above. And then it's all red, so I'm gonna move it again. So that's plus one here. Uh, this one is one card more, but I think it scores the same because it's four cards, all red. So four cards, move one, all red, move it again, plus another, oh, plus another one. Uh, this is not, this is one card by itself. This is not majority, and this is not majority. So I have, the health inspectors have come together to discuss the, um, the final rating of cat, of this peer of the first cat Sudoku pier. So we can now ignore this bottom fish entirely and now we're going to focus on the bonuses up here. So this one says 10 points. So we're gonna move to 22. And then this fish says three more points. So now I'm at 25. And if you look very carefully, there are stars here. That means that the health inspectors came and gave us a two-star rating. Oh, tough. Tough, tough, tough. But I was playing with deck number two. So deck zero, I scored 19. Deck two, I scored 25 points. 
Hi, Fitzy. I am good. How are you? My gracious. Oh, wait. No. I have Momos. How much are Momos? Hold up. We saved all the Momos, and we are greatly rewarded. The Momos miss their home. Three Momos is six victory points. That's 31. We are a three-star peer. Deck two, I got 31 points. See what a difference um, more cards make? Because you can score easier at the top of the score track. If that makes sense. We have a lot of time left. This game goes very, very quickly. Is there anyone from chat that would like to try? I do have uh, my voice... Uh, channel open on the discord you can also play through text chat if you've noticed um, on this game there are letters and numbers so you can guide me to tell me where you want to put your um, cat if that makes sense I do think it's easier if you click on the link in the pinned comment down below and join me and then I can help guide you if you get confused If not, I'll just, once again, I'll uh, put these together. And shuffle. And put this right over here. Don't be afraid to try something new. I'm here to guide you. I'm here to teach you in case anyone gets confused. We also have a cute little playtest survey QR in case, in case you have feedback. We do take your feedback into consideration. That's how we've decided to save the Momos instead of exterminate the Momos. Exterminate sounded so, so cold. Let's see. A three star says we have potential. Our peer has potential. Oh, hey, I got credited. Sick. Am I credited for... <laughs> of all things I'm not credited for, it's a one, two, three cheese, which I think is hysterical. I'm credited as the artist for that. But I did also help with some of the game mechanics. All right. I'm going to reset the game. Does anyone want to try? I'm going to take a look at Kayami's store. So once again, Kayami is the actual uh, artist for Cat Rescue, Cat Sudoku, and Cat Sudoku Pier 1. Um, look at these cute little face masks. I love this. Look how cute this is. Please do support Kayami if you have the chance. You know you're in the right section when this is this is the logo for Kayami. It's a cute little girl blowing a... Blowing some bubbles, but look at this milky ice cream cone kitty cats. I am obsessed. I am obsessed. I kind of want the washi tape for my art streams. But I feel like I should just get generic washi tape because maybe they'll think that I also made the washi tape when I did not. Look at the woos. There's little ghosties and black cats. I could credit Kayami though. Washi tape belongs to Kayami. I want these so bad. I've never wanted something so bad in my entire life. Look at them. They're cute little keychains. So cute. So, so cute. All right. Pasta sounds amazing for dinner. Yeah, I've played two games already with two different decks, and it's only an hour and 30 minutes in, so if you'd like to play, now is the time. I could play again. We can play with the Kickstarter version. The Kickstarter version's cray-cray. Let me see the Kickstarter version. 
So the Kickstarter version includes both both six and no, both seven and eight, and Momo and Zero and blank cards and this dual card. I'm not quite sure what this dual card here. These are like dual zeros. Who is this? Toby. Who's Toby? Wait a minute, who's Toby? A three month old male cat. Aw, it's Tate's childhood's friend's cat. Oh, very cute. What? Okay. Is there a breakdown for the special cards? I think not. If I had to guess, zeros are for both, because Tate is like, zero is wild. And then um, these two cards count as both red and blue, but count as two cards? Kind of like the blanks here, the red and the blue blanks, but this one is like not. Okay, I'm gonna do it. 24 cards, let's try it out. It's a great thing about solo games, you can just play as much as you want by yourself on stream. All right, let's see what we got going here. Again, just set down all eight of your cards. These games go much quicker. Do it, do it, do it. All right, we gotta do it. Oh my gosh, and right off the bat, look how cute Toby is. Is that a rainbow fish? I'm not sure what fish that is, but it looks so cute. Toby is adorable. Toby's a cute three month old kitty cat. I love it. We got our little Yurion here, the cat of the hour. If you have not seen Yurion because he came in a little bit later, this is this is he. This is the cat. Look how cute this cat is. Definitely a board gamer cat. <laughs> do it, do it, do it. I know. The cute kitty. Actually, I really like this one. Very sophisticated looking, very focused. You can see the green ring around the eye and then the rest of the eye is like a golden yellow. Very stripey. I like stripey cats. Stripey cats are cute. This is a better one of the eye. Got those like little flecks of like neon limey green. Look at the little peeties! Look at the feet! The feet are so cute. I just want to boop them. Why are cat feet so boopable? Just want to touch it. Just want to... Just want to poke it. Okay. <laughs> I'm done stalling. Let's see. Um, well, there's a Momo, and Yodian is right next to it, actually, as a red vendor cat, which is good. Uh, do we have any repeats so far? Not really. Let's do this. A red blank. All right. Cool. I'm going to push Gohan, Momo, and Yurian to the right. Momo and Yurian were together and were both pushed. So Yurian finds Momo, saves Momo, and brings Momo back home. This is a very blue, um, yeah, I don't know. This is a very blue board. I don't think I want to score just yet. I don't want to bring the health inspectors in yet. I love cats. I love cats too. That's part of why I really like working with Sunrise Tornado because I just get to see a lot of the cat stuff. It's another Momo. What the hey hey? Here, I'm going to put Momo next to Yurion again, and we're going to push them together this way. 
Wait, what? Hold, hold on. Does that work? Does that remove the Momo? Wait. The rules say that if... Hold on. If the cards push, include one vendor card and a matching colored Momo next to each other. You found Momo. Remove the Momo from the pier for endgame scoring and bring them back to their loving home. The drawn card can be any card including another Momo. It has no effect on the action. You can only remove one Momo from the pier per turn. That's fine. I feel like Tate told me this was like the one exception. Because like technically it's the placed card, not the pushed card, but you still push both of them together. So I'm tempted to take it out, but I also feel like that's a technicality we forgot about. So I'll message him about this right now. Okay. One last question about Momo. If Momo is the one placed can you also remove it in the same turn if it is pushed along with another red vendor i feel like this was a this is this is the great part about playtesting and previewing is you find where the game is broken and you help make it better for when it's actually funded on kickstarter I'm an expert at breaking games constantly, so... Unless I... Yeah, there was a technicality of like, this has not been placed yet. And it's like, they have to be placed. But if that is the case, then we need to make that more clear in the rules. But as the rules state right now, this Momo is getting saved. Because it was next to Yurion and was pushed. And both Yurion and Momo was pushed, so it would be removed from the board. But I did just want to make sure that's how he intended the game to be. Meow, meow. All right. It's still a very blue board. And I think this dual card makes this not majority because it's simultaneously red and blue at the same time. I don't think that's an either or. I'm glad I'm playtesting this one. Yes, I would love to hear the shark fact of the day. In fact, I feel like the um I feel like these fish are more shark-like. So happy shark week everybody. If you didn't know it is shark week this week. Nicole, hit us with that shark fact. That's another blank red. I will put it here and push up. And I think I will bring in an inspector. But it has to be on a red vendor card. 
So I will put it... Does Toby... What's another question? Does the zero technically count as a red vendor for meeple placing purposes? But for now, I will put it on Layla because I know for sure that this is fine. So there's two, three, four. So that's a three, three card. I'll move this up one. It's not all red though. And same thing with here. Oh wait. If this is simultaneously red and blue, then this is not majority. So I've only scored once. I done goofed. It's okay. There are no take backs. Uh, eight. I'll put the eight here and I'll scooch it this way. All right, all right. Sharks don't have the nervous system capacity to feel pain. I have never been so envious of Mr. Shark in all my life. These two can't feel pain? Oh, Mr. Shark and Chompy. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Tate answered back. This Momo, it, I was right, there is a technicality. So if Momo is pushing, it's technically not pushed in itself. And then we'll get the answer for Toby right now, I feel. I feel like this one's easier to get a good, like, you can manipulate the board easier or the cards easier when you have more cards to deal with. And then it lengthens the game so you're not technically, like, pressed for time and you have to, like, do things you don't want to do, like place the meeples too early and stuff like that. So, yes. In this case, when I had pushed... Yorian and Momo, because I'm placing Momo and Momo is the one doing the pushing. There's technically, like this, he's not being pushed. So he stays. Fascinating, okay. I'm gonna place another card while I wait for, oh. Okay, so this is dual colored. I'm gonna... Gee, I don't know. Zero is half red and half blue. It does not give majority. It's a Kickstarter tile. That's not, it's not in the rules, gotcha. Okay. So both the card and the Toby zero are neutral. They don't. Okay. In that case, I'm going to put this one here and push this down. So they are both simultaneously red and blue at the same time. They don't help with majority. So it's not like they're wild that you can choose one is red or one is blue because obviously you're going to choose red. So in this case, for this one here, uh, you would kind of ignore them and just look at the eight and the six. So this is not majority, but this is majority. How many cards do I have left? I have 11 cards. Five. I'm gonna push this way. I'm gonna place Toffee and push left. This is now a pushed Momo, so this Momo can be saved.
Hmm. I'm gonna play another card. Uh huh. Okay, that's a one. I want to give this one majority because it's so long. So these are really tricky. I'm going to push this left and then hopefully connect this one on the right hand side. So now if I'm ignoring this one and this one, got Tate on the side giving me the play-by-play -play for some of these newer cards since I'm not sure. So this one for sure is dual red and blue. Tate had just said there's a hold on there's a red and blue two tile red and blue, but two white squares on it. Okay. Um, I don't like this. This is majority blue. This is majority red. But this would count as one, two, three, four, five, six on this row, which is pretty dang good. This is what, seven or more? Okay. For the very tippity top. There's a six, there's a six here though, so I don't wanna put that here. Um, I'm gonna take this and push these together. Ooh, ooh, yes. I'm going to take this and push these together, which makes a longer chain here. How many cards do I have left? Oh my gosh. I'm stressing. Stressing, stressing. What do we got? Don't be blue. Dang it. Wait, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A lot of these leftover cards are going to be blue. Ooh, that looks like a gigantic... That looks like a gigantic one. Let me see if this is in the review copy. Oh! Is this what it's supposed to be? So I think that one is an example of an old card that was removed. So that card, I think, so Tate says, the card with two tiles, two tiles allow you to score two red tiles, but it's remove after it's scored. So if that's the case, I'm going to replace that tile that I had put down with this one. You see how it's different? It's not dual colored, it's just red and it has two tiles and there's an X on it that says, uh, that tells you, once it's scored, you take it off the board, which I think works better because I think this one's a little too confusing. I totally get Toby. I totally get Toby. Like, it doesn't count towards any majority, but I don't know what, what this is. I see the red tile in the review copy. Is that what replaces the dual two, t two card tile. I can work with that. Yes, under the blue eight. Uh, 
I'm gonna get confirmation for that. This stinker, though. Oh my gosh. This game's causing me stress. There's a lot of red out, which tells me a lot of these ones that are left here are going to be... That allows you to score two tiles once the score's removed. It counts as half red and half blue. The one in the review copy is... Hmm. So it's dual. So this one here originally was... Counts as half red and half blue. So like Toby, but once you score it, it's removed from game. I think I like this one better. And I think this is the one he's going with. If you have a line of four red tiles, that gives you two more tiles, but you don't get the double bonus because it's not entirely red. Got it. I like the one in the review copy better, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> the Toby was enough to be the Toby Zero. Okay, so let me read that shark fact. Sad shark fact of the day. We need to protect our sharks. Too many are killed by humans for their dorsal fins in a multi-million dollar shark fin trade industry. Yeah, shark soup. The shark population has been steadily declining because of humans, and yet the media depict shark as the scary ones. That's what I've been saying this whole week um, when people were like, I don't like sharks. They're mean and they're scary and they need to go away. Like, they're a huge important part of our ecosystem, right? Humans nearly killed a hundred million sharks a year for their fins, cartilage, oil, and as a result of destructive fishing practices. Protect the sharkies and learn about how wonderful and fascinating they are. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Nicole, for speaking up for our Sharky friends. Mr. Shark and Chompy appreciate it. So yes, these are two separate cards. So what, okay, if you're in chat, I do wanna know which one you prefer. I don't know, um, I'm gonna pull y'all. There's like two of you in here, but I still wanna know. So which, which two card tile do you like better? So there is all red. Two tiles removed from play or dual colors two tiles removed from play so you remove both of them from from the board after you score them with a health inspector but this one is both red and blue at the same time, just like this one, it does not help you and it counts majority. So for that one, it would be, this would be a majority red because of the eight and the one. But it also counts for two cards. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Or you can have an all red tile, an all red tile, which does the same thing. 
except it's not dual. So you have all red, counts as two tiles, and when you score it with an inspector, this guy, you remove it from the board. I want to give Tate some unbiased, <laughs> unbiased, uh, mm, opinions. So let me know which one you think is more seamless or less confusing or more beneficial for scoring at the end of the game, that sort of thing. So this one, I, d I don't want to move that there. Okay, I'm going to put it here and scooch down. This does not make this majority blue, uh, majority red. It's majority blue now because you're looking at three, six, and one. You can basically just ignore these. I love our shark friends. They're good creatures and they're just living their sharky lives. They are. They are. Yeah, it makes me really sad that Marcus wanted to play a shark game and there was like nothing available. Like the sharks were always like the thing to avoid, the like villain. Like there was no like good video game or like free available board game for us to do that like talked about how great sharks are like he wanted a positive fun shark game and it just didn't exist so we were like he's a little sad bean about that ooh who uh who voted for dual colors two tiles it's fascinating i feel like this one is easier to understand but it might mess with the balance of the play so I might give him that feedback. So you like that it's both red and blue, Michelle? Fascinating. I'll tell Tate that. Okay, I literally have four inspectors left and I have seven cards and most of them are gonna be blue. I'm a little stressed. I cannot place here. One of them's gonna be Momo too. I cannot place it here because it's not a vendor. I can't place it here because this one's in the way. Can you place a meeple on Toby? lost that one. I don't know if you've answered that one yet. Um, but in any case, this is not a majority red anyway, so I can't put that there. Um, and I can't put this here because this is blue, blue, red. So I am out of luck and I have to place another one. Hey, that's nice. Oh, that's not nice. <laughs> I'm like, yay, a red card, but it's a three. Great. Um, oh my god, I am not doing great. I don't like this. Okay, how about... 
here. And we... Nope, because this is gonna be the same issue. And I can't put it here. If I put it here... If I put it... Oh my god, what am I doing with my life? Okay, what if we put it here? This is gonna be a nice and juicy one to score later because it's all red. I wish this was a cat because I can't put it on a blank card Winter thank you for liking the stream I have plenty of time we have about an hour and I'm about to die so if you'd like to try this game you can pop into voice chat if you'd like on the discord and I can uh, I can guide you through this really cute game about making and building, constructing a fisherman's wharf of kitten vendors. Layla, hi! Oof. Ugh. This is bad. This is bad, bad, bad. I could... I can't put it there. I could put it here. I'm gonna do it. I'm putting this here because I need to get some points. <laughs> um, so this does not score because it's not majority red. It's equal, which sucks. But I can score here for just one little stripe on the bottom fish. That's three cards. You get to move it one and you get one point. I literally have two points right now. This is pitiful. <laughs> this is absolutely pitiful. I do have some momos. We are going to score at the end, but it's I'm not feeling like I'm doing so great. Regarding about Oh, regarding about to die. As I came in, you said you were not having a good time. Well, I mean I am having a good time. This game is just a very like strategic and I was not having the best pulls to be honest. But that's the whole point of the game is to see it's it's a very thinky game, puzzly game. Um, if you like Sudoku, you'll like this one because it's cats. Uh, okay, let's see. We're gonna flip and it's- oh! Ooh, ooh, it's red! It's red and it's a different color. Oh, uh, wait, 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 wait. Can we do this? Can we, can we, can we? A woe, a woe? Stand aside. Yes? Yes, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna push this over to the right. I've not messed up anything, I don't think. And, and, okay, so we can ignore these two because they don't, they're neutral cards. Uh, there's one, two. Ah, oh, it's still not majority. Cards. How many cards are left? Five. And we have how many meeples? These are our health inspectors of the Fisherman's Wharf. You don't have to play all of them. It'd be good if you play all of them because you get more points. Is this the one about adopting cats? No, but it is similar in style because it is by the same artist. This one is called, let me pull back real quick. This is Cat Sudoku Pier 1. So this is a game about 
You are the construction builder of a fisherman's wharf. And each of the cats you put down are these cute little vendors. Do you see that? They're the they're the vendors. They're the ones that are they're the merchants. They're the ones selling the fish that they are shown with. So for example, Mr. President, the shop cat from Geeky Tees, is selling red snapper. And I've put I've placed Mr. President here in this column and this row. And it's like Cat Sudoku in that you don't want to end the game with repeating numbers. So, so far, I don't have any repeating numbers in rows or in columns. But you also want to get a majority red. Uh, you can choose to place a health inspector meeple to check out um, if your wharf is up to code. And they will grade you and give you points based off how well it scores throughout the game. At the end of the game, you're going to flip any uh, repeating tiles and you'll get an overall score for the entire thing. And you want to save and rescue these cute little Momo mice. Obviously, if there's a little Momo here and a health inspector is strolling down the street and is like, your fisherman's wharf has rats, you're not getting any points for that row. But I did send this one home. These are also worth points at the end of the game. Uh, Kayami is the artist. Uh, let's see, let's drop the collab again. So we have a lot of different links going up this time in the collab, um, in the collab command. A lot of different ones, so I'm gonna go through them again. Um, the first one is the Sunrise Tornado Facebook page and the website. Uh, the second one is the illustrator of the game. Uh, her name is Kayami. This is what her store looks like. You can tell this is the same artist. She is the same one that did Cat Rescue. She is the same one that did Cat Sudoku and the one who did Pier 1. We partner with Kayami quite a lot for Sunrise Tornado games. Exactly, yes. Thank you for being here. Uh, she's got washi tape right now. Um, cute little stuffies, stickers. We got the cat stickers, bread stickers, sparkly bread sticker. Space pandas. We got stationery. There's face masks. There's literally a whole collage of like cats here. There's like spooky Halloween ghost kitty cat. There is, oh my gosh, is this bread cat face mask? Bread cat face mask, I'm just saying. And then my personal favorite, um, ice cream cat plushies that are also keychains. The Milky Trio, so cute. They are so stinking cute. I love them, I adore them. Definitely support Kayami. Kayami is the actual artist for this game in the in the trifecta of the Sunrise Tornado Kickstarter happening in August 20 or on August 23rd. So this one is three different artists. Kayami is the one at the top, did the Cat Sudoku Pier 1, which is what I'm playing right now. And then um, I did 123 Cheese and Fua. Fua did Boba Mahjong. Very cute. But yeah, you can tell. Each of these cats are uh, based off of real cats. So right after that one, we have Cats and Spiel Solutions for Facebook. They are the person who made um, the digital version of the tabletop simulator version for um, Cat Sudoku Roll for Clouds and Roll for Kyoto. Um, they also have their own game coming out, which is also on Kickstarter. They are funded. So if you want this game called Klepto Kittens, I included the link for their Kickstarter. This is not a Sunrise Tornado game. This is a Cats and Spiel Solutions game. Uh, this is their first game and they funded already. There's five days to go. So if you'd like to back this project, and as you can tell, the artwork is very similar. Uh, Cassie from Cats and Spiel Solutions also 
um, commissioned Kayami for the art for her game. But it's basically just about like training cats and seeing the little treasures that they bring home. Very cute. Um, Kayami only did the art for the cats and I believe she um, commissioned somebody else to do the other little treasures like the bottle caps and the feathers and stuff. But she does a lot of tabletop simulator and um, tabletopia stuff so if you're looking to um, reach out to someone who has that skill type uh, definitely hit up Captain Spiel. And Yurian is her cat. So that cat over on the corner, Yurian, uh, this is what he looks like. He's a five-year-old cat. They're from Australia. Look how cute. Meow, meow. All of the cats in the Cat Sudoku series are based off of real cats. This is the real and true Yurian. And Cat Sudoku is a solo player game. So you can play this by yourself. And then maybe write down, like for example, I played with uh, the Zero deck and I got 19 points. And I played with this deck and I got 31 points. So if someone wants to challenge my score and... Uh, you know, try to beat my score with whichever deck, you will get five badges for winning and you'll get three badges just for trying on the server. Uh, okay, so this is still not majority and I, you are not allowed to place here because there's an inspector here. So these inspectors block each other. It's one of the trickiest parts of the game. And I think with that, you're all caught up and there's a Momo. How dare you? <laughs> Momo! What are you doing? Why? Okay, I'm putting Momo next to Gogo. <laughs> all right. And I'm gonna push to the right. So. It is interesting that you thought it was Cat Rescue because I feel like uh, Pier 1 is the first of its kind in the Cat Sudoku series. It is the third game in the series, but it is the first game that is not a roll or write game. Um, and it kind of is like if Cat Rescue and Cat Sudoku had a baby, because you're trying to not get the repeating numbers, but it borrows the mechanic from Cat Rescue of pushing the cats and like, uh, recreating the board, if you know what I mean. So if you've played Cat Rescue before and you've played Roll and Write games or Sudoku, you can kind of see how uh, this works together. So I'm gonna do that. Again, placing and pushing Momo does not remove Momo. Momo's the one doing the pushing. Um, in order to remove the rats, you need Momo next to a red cat, which I've set up for. And I'm just gonna double check I don't have any repeats here. Good, good, yes, okay. Um, and then as long as these two are one of the cards pushed uh, by any card, so it could be a blank card, a blue card, a Momo card, doesn't matter, you remove Momo from the game and it leaves an empty spot where Momo once was. All right. Oh my gosh, okay. Eight. Oh, I don't want to put the eight there. I just don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Okay, how about if I put it here? I'm going to put it here and I'm going to push down. Because Momo was attached to Mia, and they were both pushed, Momo is now removed from play. We have successfully brought all of the mice home. Um, and that way I don't have the repeat of the eights. This stays a nice, um, clean row of red 
which is a row of six. That's pretty impressive. But I only have two, three cards left. And I have three health inspectors that have not done their rounds yet. I'm a little stressed. <laughs> Just a wee bit stressed. Uh, all right, well, can I put it anywhere? Okay, so I cannot put it here because there's this health inspector here. This one's been blocking my way since the very beginning. I kind of have Rigetti Spaghetti's. The split color tiles, so these count as both red and blue. This is just the number zero. Toby doesn't Toby's just split. Toby is both. So when scoring, you want a majority of that color. So with split tiles, they don't you can kind of just ignore them because uh, they don't count to the blue side or they don't count to the red side. Um, so Toby is just sort of a different number, but doesn't help you or hinder you. Same thing with this one. We're trying to see if we're going to keep this one or not, or make this an all red double tile. So this has the same concept, but these white mean that it counts as two. So this row is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven this is a seven long row because of this but this will like toby not help you get majority red so if you ignore this one and you ignore this one for color majority uh it's a majority blue because you've got a blue eight a blue three a blue four and only one red one This is, I'm playing the most um, difficult one, or the one with the most involved cards. So it's not going to get more confusing than this. <laughs> if you can understand what I'm saying, you'll understand all of the different variations for all the different um, difficulty levels. Honestly, I feel like for a game that's like Sudoku, zero is the hardest because you can only make your rows and your columns so long and you get more points for longer rows, longer columns. And when you have less numbers, you have more of a chance to repeat them, which is really stressful. But zero is a great one to practice to understand the mechanics because you don't have all this other stuff to remember. So when you're starting, uh, Tate suggests to start with zero to understand the mechanics and then slowly build your way up. I personally say start with one because you can understand the mechanics but also have the leniency of like longer rows and stuff like that with the extra sevens and eights without having to think about your momos or your blanks. And then when you get comfortable with that, then you can like mess around with the Momo or the dual, the dual cards and Momo and blank and the seven and the eight. This is, I think, one of the most difficult ones of the set. It's really catered to more of the Euro uh, strategy type players. Um, it's also a solo game, so if you're having difficulties trying to find someone to play with, like, you just can't play with, uh, you know, someone for cat rescue or anything like that. Like, you can kind of sit here and just try to do your best and beat your own scores. It's been very helpful for the stream. I've just been playing by myself. But you're all more than welcome to try one as well. I think there will be time for one more game if someone wants to come step up to the plate and give it a shot. Uh, this is so bad. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna have to pull the next card. It's a seven. Uh, 
I'm gonna consider this row a loss. So I'm gonna go ahead and use it as a way to push out this maple. And I'm gonna play, yeah, cause I only got two left. I have to place this somewhere. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna play this on a wish. So this is a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is a row of seven. So I'm gonna move this top one up here, one stripe. The fishes in the scoring track determine, like they have different increments of scores, right? And you get more points for the longer your row is. So these cards here are showing a row or column of seven or more with a majority red. That's why I moved this token on this sharky striped fishy friend. I do not score these five points immediately. I'll score them at the end of the game uh, because there is no plus sign. See down here, there's a plus sign. All right. If this entire row was red, I would have scored again. I cannot score again because this is not a pure red tile. Had this been the other one, this red double tile card, I would have scored again, but I cannot. Now that this has been used in scoring with this, I remove it from play. I remove it from the board. That's how that works. Which actually helps because now I can place something on this row if we look at it that way. Interesting. Okay. I cannot score for the vertical because to score minimum you need three or more cards. Do you see that on the bottom? Three or more cards and it's only two cards. Hi Beth, thank you for liking the stream. Welcome on in. Uh, I've got two meeples left and I have two cards left. This is a five. I'm in a predicament. I kind of want to squish these together for a longer scoring at the end of the game, but I also kind of want to put down a meeple. Okay, hold on. If I put down a meeple around here somewhere, if I put it here, for instance, and push up and then I can place it on the five that would be one two three four twice so that'd be two points and then this would be so I would move this one down three so that would be one two three four so that would be four points but if I were to place this here and squish this all together that'd be one two three four five six wait one two three four five six and moving a six card one is three at the end of the game it's actually better to keep them separate so I think I'll do that so I'm going to put the five here and then just like in cat rescue you have to choose how you're going to push. So I'm going to push up. These, there are threes on either side, but this gap here makes it okay because these are considered two separate rows now. And now I'm going to use a health inspector to go here and I'm going to do just that. There's one, two, three, four. They're all different numbers, all red. So I get to move that last fish twice. And then this one I can score because it's majority red all different numbers but mr president here is not red so i only moved that once so for the four cards 
I move one, I score that immediately. It's all red, so I'll score again. So I'll move this. This arrow moves the top fish one. There is no plus here, we'll score that later. Um, for the up and down with the Mr. President line, you're gonna move here. This says refresh, go to the front. You're going to score one more. I can do that because this merchant or this uh, health inspector is separate from this one. And same thing with these, the diagonals don't count. All right, last card, a one. I am going to place this one, oop. I'm gonna place this one under this blank card. These blank cards help with the majority of your, um, of this. So like here, I can't score here because it's one and one, but I put this under so I can push these both up. Now I can score this. Do you see what I mean? I would rather score here, but I'm not allowed to place that here. I can put it here on Gohan because I can still score this vertical even though there's nothing to score on the horizontal. So this is a one, two, three, four column, majority red, all different. So I'm just going to move this down here, one, score this immediately. There are no more, there are no more cards in here. So I will take off all the meeples and double check for repeating numbers. Nope, 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 nope. Nope. These are two separate ones. There is no repeat here on row seven. You see how this is row seven? This is not repeat. You do not flip these over because there is a space here. Same thing here. This six is alone. Eight, three, zero, two, seven, one. Good. I don't have any cats to flip because in rules of Sudoku, um, these are fine. We're only checking rows and columns. So now what happens is you're going to score each individual row or column. So let's start with this one here. It's one, two, three, four cards, which means this fish right here. We're going to scooch one. That says plus one, so we're going to move it immediately. This one, row E, or column E, is not majority red, so we do not score it. This one here is a really good example of the dual cards. Toby, or the zero card, is both. Does not exactly like count towards majority. So you can see that this column is six blank three and it is majority so we are going to score the one two three four fishy this one goes here this arrow says move this one there's no plus we will score that later this one is three majority red we're going to move this bottom fish again plus one this is by itself. It cannot score. It does not have enough cards. Same thing here. These two are alone. And these two don't have enough. It needs to be three or more. Now we're gonna go with the rows. This is all blue. We're gonna ignore that. This is majority blue. We're ignoring this one. This is, ma this is majority red and all red. So this game really likes to reward uniformed colors. So because it's all red, well, because it's a majority red, I'll move it one, score the one. Uh, because it's all red, you get to move it again. You score the one. This one does not score. 
This scores. Uh, that's three, move it one. This is moving the top fish. This does not score, this does not score, and this does not score. We have three Momos, which gives me six points, I believe. Three Momos is six victory points, so I'm gonna do that immediately. Nine plus six is 15. And now we're going to look at, now we're gonna look at the three fishies at the top. Fishies? Fishies! fishies? They look like stripy sharks. Happy Shark Week. Happy Shark Week. Nicole dropped a bunch of shark facts today. They don't have a nervous system and they do not feel pain. They don't feel pain is sad? How is that sad? Feeling pain? The sense of touch. Oh, the sense of touch. Well, if you put it that way, then yeah, it's sad. Anyways, enough about sad shark facts. So you're going to see these at the end. This one was nothing. But this one was five, so we're going to move that to 20. And then this is seven, so we're gonna add seven to that. And then the star ratings are what the inspectors grade your peer at the end. I only got a two star. Wompity womp. I only got a two star. This game is hard. I've been getting two star peers and I got one three star peer. But yeah, if someone thinks that they can beat my score of 27 with the Kickstarter one, or if they can beat my score of 31 with my, uh, with deck two, which includes the, the rats, but nothing super special, or my score of 19 with zero, you are, I'm a, ooh, okay, Winter has a question. Let's answer that question. Winter says, I'm a little confused. Why do you score mid game? And do you only push right and down? You push basically in, um, where is the card? If I were to push here, this spot, wherever you place, you push whoever is next to you, just like you would do in Cat Rescue. Um, so I could push, oop and it would be this cat pushing. So if I put five down, you could push up. And then if you were to put this here, you can decide to push these to um, right. You could push left, but that would push this like that or you could push down it would look like this you could also place outside in this case if you're placing five underneath, you can. You only have one choice to push. There has to be something to push, just like in Cat Rescue. So you would push this in, like so. Does that make more sense with the pushing? In terms of how I'm scoring in the middle of the game, that's just how the score track works. So let's take a closer look at the score track. This box is end game scoring. So basically, with any row or column that you score with the health inspectors, you have to see how many cards you that are on the row or column you placed on. So for example, yes, and the requirements to push. Awesome. And then for example, well, you have to push. Anytime you put a card down, you have to push. That's mandatory. 
Um, so there's a lot of pre-planning in this game. You have to kind of like think two to three steps ahead. Um, it's just like where you place it. So Gohan, this one, I, you can't place on a diagonal. You need to push something. You always have to put it next to a cat or a blank or you have to put it next to another card. You have to place all the inspectors? You do not. I was just stressing to place the inspectors because this is... These inspectors are how you score in the middle of the game. Scoring in the middle of the game is really important because it boosts up your points. Basically, you can place only four, but then you kind of lose out on um, the scoring ability you, you lose out on extra points if you don't place all of them. Sometimes, like in my case, it might have been better to not place it because it would have ruined the end game scoring. So there's a lot of moving parts to this game. For looking so cute, it is a little complicated for those who are not into gateway games. Uh, this is definitely more of a Euro type, um, very strategic game despite looking so dosh, gosh darn cute um but yeah so if you look here this is a one two three four five six so if i were to place the inspector here on toffee you score for both the row and the column these are all very great questions and i'm glad you're asking them so you would first score for whichever one you want. I'm just, I just like doing the bigger one because it's like, yeah, you, you like hit with a bang, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. All of them have to be different numbers and a majority red. So this definitely does that. Okay, so six cards. Let's go back here. The, the cards at the top, uh, these squares represent the cards. So that would be this one. You would move this token here. You would move it one stripe over. So that for that column. That column also happened to be all red. The inspector really likes organization. So you get rewarded by being able to move the stripe one more time for the row uh, with the right amount of cards. So you move it again. Okay. Now your inspector not only checks the column, uh, sorry, the row, but also the column. So here the numbers are four, two, and five. They're all different. That's great. Um, and there's majority red. Mr. President is not red in this case. Mr. President, the cat, is blue. So because he was blue and not red, you don't get to score a second time with the stripe. So with this one, that was a column of three. You're going to use the... You're going to use this fish on the bottom. The fish in the bottom is a little bit special. <laughs> um, there is a plus signs here. So all of these on this little box here, none of them have plus signs. These plus signs are where you're going to score in the middle of the game. So because it was three cards, I move it one stripe. With the plus sign, I can move my token one and that's it had mr president been red as well i could have moved it a second time and then gotten the next point but that was not the case if there are sorry everyone for the noise if there are these arrows so if i was here and i moved here this just says move the fish over on the top 
so you'll get more points at the end of the game. This means refresh. This means move this to the front. You will immediately get that plus one. I think that pretty much covers it. Winter, are there any more questions that you have? I don't have my Simistics later tonight, so if you did want to try some of it and we can go over the time, I'd be happy to let you try it out. If not, I'd be happy to find someone to raid. I think that's pretty much it. We did pretty much all of the decks except for one. I did zero, two, and the Kickstarter one. Does anyone have any more questions? Oh, this didn't come up because I made sure not to have any repeats. But let's say this happened and there was a repeat. At the end scoring, you would flip them over. And it's like, that doesn't count. So you would have a, this would be a column of one, and this would be a row of four. This would be a row of one, two, three, four, five. Four and game scoring. Uh, let me see, that question got pushed up. So you have taken clips of you or others explaining this role for YouTube videos, but for people wanting to learn the game but don't understand well with reading. Your explanations are really good. I would hope so. <laughs> so I've actually, um, I take pride in teaching um, toddlers these type of games. I think that, um, you know, having a background in early childhood education really um, helps, really helps with uh, explaining things. I like to start with the theme to get people into it. And then I like to go into how do you win the game? So you kind of did miss the beginning part. Um, so you win the game by getting more points. It is a solo game, so there's no one to really compete with except yourself. Um, if you notice, there are these stars. Um, so that's kind of like your, your construction of the pier is being rated by these health inspectors and you're trying to get a highly rated Fisherman's Wharf for the Cat Sudoku universe. So obviously you want a five star. You want the five stars. You want to get as close to 40 as possible. I've only been getting two or three stars. My first game I got a one star. It was very sad. <laughs> um, how do you get those points? Well, you need to line up your cats in a way where your health inspectors can come in and give you points throughout the game as well as in the end of the game. That sort of thing. So I, I do have a little bit of a um, philosophy with how to teach uh, games. I think it's really important to give the context of what we're actually doing with what. I think sometimes it's really difficult to kind of pop in or someone starts off the explanation of a board game and they're going through all the mechanics of the game and you just don't have any context for why you need to have that information, it's really hard to grasp. Um, and I think that's a lot of the issues with rule books too. Uh, sometimes people need a really good visual. Um, so yes, long story short, I will be taking clips of this. So this is why I do do a how to play um, playthroughs are really important too, but they are very long, so I will be, um, for some cases, because I think that when live streaming it, I, I do get like interrupted by some like, hey, thank you for liking the stream, blah blah blah, and all that stuff. So my initial intention was to just make clips and then put them in there, but I think when I have time, I'll, um, where the chat box is, I'm going to actually type out all the main points of what I'm actually saying and then uh, explain it again in a more quiet fashion and then um, re-explain it, hopefully keep it to no longer than 10 minutes for explanations and maybe I'll take clips from when I'm playing live to um, add that to the end and then use 
the YouTube, like, oh, go to this timestamp to see examples of this or examples of that. And then, like, do the little floaty box thing. But that takes a lot of time. I'm not sure when I'll be able to do it. I do want to do it before the Kickstarter um, on August 23rd. I wish that was my Semistic sad. I don't feel up for playing right now, but thank you. Okay, yeah, no problem, no problem. So, yeah, thank you for all your questions because sometimes, like, I, like, if no one's asking me things, I just think that everyone understands what's going on. So, I just keep going. But if there's, it's really hard to follow with something when you're not sure about the base rules and stuff like that. This also helps me see where things are confusing. So I can bring it back to Tate, I can bring it back to the designers, and maybe they rethink those rules. Maybe they go, you know what, that is really confusing and makes sense to only me. And then they make those changes for the, you know, we play test. That's what play testing is about, to make the product better for you, the consumer. And uh, hopefully we do see these games as a reality because right now it's, it's not official. The Kickstarter has not launched yet. But I do implore you to give it a try when you can. Um, all of these are available to play as well. You can host your own on Tabletopia. The Sunrise Tornado um, Kickstarter pages do give a look. There's the illustrators here. There's the rules. There's the sign up for the Kickstarter. And then also links for demos. So for a demo, please click here to visit Sunrise Discord and ask for a demo. And you can also send surveys if you are playing and you find something confusing, you can let us know, we can make changes there. And yeah, so all of the, I am not the only streamer in this campaign, by the way. So Amanda Panda on um, Twitch and we have um, Monique who's also on Twitch. Um, we have a combination of Facebook gamers and Twitch gamers. Uh, Happy Axawaddle said that he would be helping out as well um, and kindly rated us today. I don't know if Happy is still here, but Happy is on both Twitch and Facebook and will be uh, playing these in the future and I'll be happy to post them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's go to the end scene and let's talk about who we're going to rate. Let me, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to make a friend who is playing like a board game. I wonder if, am I the only one playing something tagged with board game? Board game is a tag. I don't think many people know that, but also Dungeons and Dragons is a tag. So if there's anyone streaming either of those, I would really like to say hi and make a new friend. Yes, and if you are here, please, please stay for the raid so we can say hello. Oh, let's see. What? Okay, let's search for board game first. Go to following. Not streamers I follow. I want to do games I follow. Uh, let's see. Who is playing? There's Dungeons and Dragons. I don't see board game. anyone live there's no one live for dungeons and dragons right now that's unfortunate hopefully there'll be more people um doing these sort of things so that we can you know rate them in the future and make that more of a thing here on facebook gaming as well uh so of people that i know who are on <laughs> We have someone playing Naruto the Boruto, Shinobi Striker, if you want to get some of that anime fix. If we're talking about indie games, that is like something that no one is playing right now. 
Gamma Force Gaming is playing Naruto to Boruto, Shinobi Striker. Well, we have um, Animal Crossing with Amanda Lay behind the lash. We have Hungry Gaming playing Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword that just came out today. I did raid Chim Kicks with that earlier. Um, super wonderful. Uh, we also have Aubrey Kadabra Gaming with Pokemon Sword and Shield. And yeah, that's who we have right now. Who are in the single digits that I would like to help out. I hope more do these games, I love them. I know, me too. Me too. But I think that's a... That's one of the reasons why I actually want to stay. That's a lot of reason why people are leaving to go on Twitch, but I feel like, uh, personally, it's harder to find me. Or if, it, if I were to go, it'd be harder to find me. Here, like, since no one's doing them and it's so unique and so indie here, that if someone were to look it up, I'd be the only one. You know, like, there's the strategy of, like, um do things so different that if someone looks it up you find your niche and that's kind of like the avenue I'm going with. Plus I'd miss everybody here on Facebook. Does anyone have a preference? We've got Naruto, Animal Crossing, Skyward Sword. Oh Tortilla just came on with Sims 4. Tortilla streams. Anybody, anybody? Otherwise, if I don't hear back in like one minute, I'm just gonna pick somebody. I'm just gonna pick somebody. <laughs> I'm game for Sims. There we go. Thanks, Winter. Let's see. Sims, 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 Sims. Sims was Tortilla. Just in case the raid does not take you, here is the link. Tortilla streams. That makes it easy. And I'm gonna end and go Tortilla streams. There it is. I'm gonna send you over. Something about making babies. I don't know what that's about, but, uh, <laughs> I'll see you all next week. Take care. Bye, everybody. Thanks for stopping by for another board game hour. It really means a lot. Bye.